day grade 11s, welcome to this nice lesson in week 31. In this week we have learned what redox reactions are, that they are made up of oxidation and reduction half reactions and together they make up a full redox reaction. We have learned about oxidation numbers and how to assign them. Now in this lesson we are going to use, we are going to learn how to use oxidation numbers in redox reactions. Good day grade 11s. In this lesson we will learn how we use our knowledge of oxidation numbers in chemical reactions. In order to do this let us remind ourselves of the rules for assigning oxidation numbers that we already know. It is important that you know these rules well. If an oxidation number of an element changes in a chemical reaction then this reaction is a redox reaction. So the first use of oxidation numbers of elements in a redox reaction is to determine if a redox reaction is indeed a redox reaction. Nelly will now help us to use our knowledge to decide if a redox reaction occurs. We will look at two experiments, both using copper 2 sulfate. Here we have two beakers filled with a copper 2 sulfate solution. To the first solution we add a solution of lead 2 nitrate and to the second in beaker we add a sample of zinc. In the first beaker the solution remains blue but a white precipitate forms on the bottom of the beaker. This is the insoluble salt lead to sulfate. The chemical equation for this reaction is PB open brackets NO3 close brackets 2 plus Cu SO4 reacts to form PbSO4 plus Cu open brackets NO3 close brackets 2. In the second beaker the blue solution fades and the gray zinc dissolves. A deposit of orange brown copper begins to form. The chemical equation for this reaction is Zn plus CuSO4 react to form Zn SO4 plus Cu. Do you think you could assign oxidation numbers to each of the elements in these reactions and see if there have been any changes? Remember, if there is a change in oxidation number, a redox reaction has taken place. If there is no change in oxidation number, the reaction is a non-redox reaction. Here are the answers I got. First I assigned oxidation numbers using the rules we established in the previous lesson. For the reaction in the first beaker where I added lead 2 nitrate to copper 2 sulfate, the oxidation numbers of the elements didn't change. The arrangement of electrons in all the atoms remained the same. Therefore this is classified as a non-redox reaction. In the second beaker the reactants were zinc and copper sulfate and the product consists of zinc, 2 sulfate and copper. Notice that the oxidation number of zinc has changed from 0 to plus 2 while copper has changed from plus 2 to 0. The change in oxidation number indicates that there has been a change in the way electrons are arranged around the copper and zinc atoms. Therefore, this reaction can be classified as a redox reaction. Notice the oxidation numbers of the atoms in the sulfate ion did not change. These ions took no part in the redox reaction and are called spectator ions. Now that we know how to determine whether a reaction is a redox reaction or not, let us have a closer look at the zinc-copper reaction. In this reaction, we notice that the blue color of the copper solution fades and the zinc becomes covered in what looks like copper. Nelly describes what happens on a microscopic level. The copper 2 plus ion found in the blue copper sulfate solution reacted to form neutral copper atoms. The oxidation number of the copper ion is 2 plus while the copper atom has an oxidation number of 0. Notice that the oxidation number of the copper ion decreased from plus 2 to 0. 
at the start it was poor in electrons and thus had a positive charge of plus two. During the reaction it gained two negatively charged electrons reducing its positive charge and bringing it to a neutral state. So two electrons are added to the copper ion in the chemical equation to form a copper atom. When the oxidation number decreases or reduces like this, becoming more negative, we call the process reduction. Remember, a charge can't be created or destroyed. So where did the copper obtain these electrons? The only possible source is one of the other reactants. The source from which the electrons are obtained is called the reducing agent. From which substance in the reactants do you think the electrons came? This was our original equation. Oxidation numbers tell us when there is a change in the arrangement of electrons and the only other substance where the oxidation number changed was zinc. Let's have a look at what happened to the zinc in the reaction. The oxidation number of the zinc became more positive. The zinc atom lost negatively charged electrons and became electron poor when the zinc ion formed. The zinc atom therefore donated two electrons during the reaction. These two electrons are added to the product in writing the chemical equation. This shows that the zinc atom is the source from which the copper ion gained electrons. Zinc is therefore the reducing agent for this redox reaction. But wait, something else happened to the zinc in this reaction. If the zinc atom donated two negative electrons to the copper, thus becoming an ion, it must have lost some of its negative charge and become more positive by the same amount. Two, when an oxidation number becomes more positive, indicating that electrons have been lost, we call this process oxidation. Oxidation doesn't take place by itself. Something needs to persuade the electrons to move away from the zinc atom. This substance is called the oxidizing agent. Can you identify this agent? The copper ions are the oxidizing agent. Here's the whole picture. Copper ions gained negative electrons, reducing the positive charge, and formed a copper atom. This is a reduction reaction. Zinc is the reducing agent for this reaction. The zinc atom lost its negative electrons, increasing its positive charge, and formed zinc ions. This is an oxidation reaction. Copper 2 plus is the oxidizing agent for this reaction. Oxidation cannot take place alone, neither can reduction. For a reaction to occur, the processes of oxidation and reduction must work together. Oxidation is half of the process, reduction is the other half. For this reason, we call these processes half reactions. By adding the half reactions together, we complete a whole reaction consisting of reduction and oxidation. That's quite a mouthful. So we shorten the name to redox. Now let's take the half reaction equations and add them together. When doing this, bear in mind that charge is always conserved and the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. These are the two half reactions, copper plus two to copper and below zinc to zinc plus two. The number of electrons on the reactant side of the arrow is the same as the number on the product side. We cancel these out because the same number of electrons lost in the oxidation half reaction is gained by the reduction half reaction. Next, we add the reactants and products together for a complete redox equation. Let us summarize what we have learned. If an atom becomes more positive, it means that it has lost electrons and therefore has been oxidized. The substance that donates its electrons causes the other substance to gain electrons. Therefore, the substance that loses the electrons is the reducing agent. 
A substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent. When an atom becomes more negative, it means that it has gained electrons and it is reduced. It has accepted electrons from another substance, and this causes the other substance to be oxidized. A substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. Nelly defined a half reaction as either the oxidation or reduction part of a redox reaction. When we add these two half reactions together, we get the full redox reaction. Let us revisit Nelly's example of the two half reactions and see how they add up to make a full redox reaction. These are the two half reactions, copper plus two to copper and below zinc to zinc plus two. The number of electrons on the reactant side of the arrow is the same as the number on the product side. We cancel these out because the same number of electrons lost in the oxidation half reaction is gained by the reduction half reaction. Next, we add the reactants and products together for a complete redox equation. Right, grade 11s, I hope you've realized how important oxidation numbers are in helping us with redox reactions. And I hope that you really appreciate the fact that this video has consolidated what we've been talking about, in that redox reactions are a combination of an oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction, which together make up a redox reaction. And there has to be a transfer of electrons. Please go practice using the oxidation numbers in redox reactions and then do the assessment in the two enable system. Have a great day.